phenomenon. For those who believe, deny everything. For those who don't, the truth is out there. No other series has had a greater impact on British television. No other series dares to stretch the limits of your imagination. And no other series will take you closer to the edge. The X-Files is unique. To imagine uh, the kind of success we've had with the show, the kind of international following it's gained, popularity of the show, I'd be a liar to tell you that I ever imagined it could be um, this successful. It was a profound and exciting time the actual shooting of the pilot and um, just being a part of that whole experience was uh it was wild just the idea was fantastic and the script was wonderful it was so intriguing what what was attractive to me about the character was his uh, the intensity of his conviction to a far out concept and a far out belief system and i wasn't planning on playing him like a you know like doctor who it's actually, I had written Mulder originally as, as kind of um, uh, an M, uh, MTV VJ. I wanted him to be Troy. I wanted him to be uh, uh, acerbic. I thought David uh, Duchovny and Gillian Anderson were just incredibly talented and charismatic people. Together, it just, it just cooked, you know? It was just the chemistry that just popped right off the screen. When I first read the pilot script, I was so um, taken by how much Scully stood up for herself in the face of this supposedly brilliant character of Mulder. The first scene when they first meet each other in, in Mulder's office. Agent Mulder, I'm Dana Scully. I've been assigned to work with you. And she basically stands there. She's, you can tell that she's green, that she's a little nervous, but she, uh, she stands up for herself. I've heard a lot about you. Oh, really? And also, the intellectual repartee between the two of them um, was incredibly intriguing. Um, and in Jillian, uh, she actually came in and she was quite different looking than what you, uh, the Scully that you see on the screen now. She was very urban and uh, a little um, disheveled. When she came in, I saw that she had an intensity. I, I felt the intensity in her, uh, uh, her person and in her performance. And I thought immediately that uh, uh, this is Scully. And the X-Files had everything. I knew the pilot was very good. I always knew that the uh, existence of extraterrestrial life and the government conspiracy to keep the truth about that, whatever it is, from us would be the basis and the foundation for the series. So I think the pilot came out pretty much how I wanted it to. Uh, and the show has really been a very close product of uh, my original uh, conceived idea. It was a profound and an exciting time. I just have a lot of fond memories about the whole experience, and I think the show is great. I knew we had something really good. T minus 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 4, 2, 1. Before anyone passes judgment, may I remind you, we are in the Arctic. I chose this episode because it was really the first time um, since we started the show that I think we all had a very strong feeling of what it was that we were doing and what the potential was for the show. The whole thing basically took place in this um, in this set of winding tunnels and hallways and and um, it was a very strong sense of, of confinement and, and paranoia that was involved, which really um, gave the episode a, a, an edge. It was the first time when we all just really came together and worked really, really hard and, and felt that we were making something important. Within a few hours, that parasite had total control. And it was also the first episode where Mulder and Scully um, both um, have to confront each other. Um, um, in a very powerful scene, where, scene where, where we pull guns on each other. As far as I'm concerned, you're all inspected! Hodge is right, we ought to lock him up. Mulder! Sally, get that gun off! Mulder, you have to understand! Put it down! You put it down first! Sally! 
And that scene where we, um, where we check each other in the room um, is the first time that you really see Mulder and Scully touching each other. And it's very provocative the way the camera, the, the way the camera moves around us and the way the lighting is with a single light bulb that's swinging. And then for her to start to walk away and him to stop her, there's a, there's a, a moment of, of fear and tension in that because you don't know if he's going to attack her if he is actually has actually been affected by this um, this parasite. I think I think there there was a huge element of fear um, in in that scene um, and through the whole episode in general because they they didn't know who to trust. There were all these different um, co-stars, other characters in the show who um, who were were helping us and hindering us. It's one of you. He's lying. You could have done it and not even know. It will always stick in my mind as being as being one of our um, um, strongest episodes and, and one which really represented a, a turning point for us. T minus 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0. Uh... Donnie. Donnie Faster. I've always felt the X-Files can uh, uh, work on many different levels, and it doesn't always have to be the paranormal. And I think people have said, even though this is a very popular episode, that it really wasn't a, an X-File. I always felt that the uh, that wasn't quite fair. The X-Files can be many things, uh, different levels of the paranormal, of the weird, of the just unexplainable. But really, I decided to scare the audience. But in this case, I think the character was so creepy. I needed this character to be arrogant, and I needed him to have a, a sort of uh, a lack of conscience that came through as well. And there's a deeper psychosis at work here. It's an unfathomable hatred of women. When you talk to the people who have studied serial killers or uh, people who have these strange uh, bents, they'll tell you that they are all um, lacking conscience. They have no concept of good or bad, right or wrong, moral or immoral. Nothing can prepare you for it. It's almost unimaginable. I thought what was interesting about exploring Scully's fear was that uh, um, she never lets Mulder see it. She can't. She must appear to be as brave and heroic and, uh, and um, unfearful as he. And all of a sudden, she was um, uh, hit with some of her worst fears, some of the, uh, the, the fear of what could be lurking just outside the window. And I thought that that fear, rather than a boogeyman, an alien, a ghost, uh, uh, something paranormal, was even more frightening to her. And it was, I thought it was very tender and poignant, and that she is able to break down in front of Mulder at the end was a, a real opportunity to do something nice dramatically with the characters, because we all have weaknesses, we all have insecurities, we all have vulnerabilities, we all have ups and downs and cycles in our lives. You think you can look into the face of pure evil, and then you find yourself paralyzed by it. Uh, I think that the way I approached it, and the way I approached it, and the way the uh, episode was realized was um, uh, really made for one of the best X-Files ever, I think. T minus 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0. I, I think it was uh, when we did Dwayne Barry and Ascension in One Breath, which is kind of a three-parter. It was it was kind of the first uh, multi-part part episode that we did, and, and we kind of uh, went to another level of uh, of storytelling than we had been at before. I hear you, Dwayne. You hear me because I got a gun. No, I believe your story. Also, um, working with Steve Railsback was great because he, he was just a... Uh, tremendous actor to work with and, and I remember he came in on an off day to play a corpse I mean you know he, to be off camera he was off camera for me playing a dead person so that's the kind of you know generosity that he has even though I, of course he didn't need it because a corpse doesn't really tend to give you that much well you know I think Mulder uh, wants to believe his story he wants to believe he doesn't want to believe that it's a delusion because if uh, if Dwayne Barry's telling the truth then um, Mulder's search for his sister or search for the truth about that situation is that much closer and if uh, Dwayne Barry is not telling the truth then Mulder's been an idiot and, and fooled by a, a madman. Where do they take you, Dwayne? Is there a ship? There's a moment when 
you know, he asks Dwayne a question and then sends him to the window to get shot. And uh, either way, he, if he was telling the truth or if he was a madman, it's a sad moment because you know that Dwayne believes what he's saying. Go lock the door. When you look at, at, uh, at the episode, the bulk of the episode is just two people sitting, talking. And, uh, and Chris, with, with the movement of the camera, and uh, Steve and I, by, you know, trying to make the performances lively, I think, you know, we show that the, the show can be just as exciting talking as it is, you know, running around with flashlights and spaceships and things like that. I know the pain and the fear you must feel. He's going to push him right over the edge. Dwayne Barry is not what Mulder thinks he is. And uh, it was just a lot of fun to be able to work together uh, so closely, uh, him as a director and me as an actor, so that I just have a lot of fond memories about the whole experience, and I think the show is great. That was my bathing suit. So I chose red long before it was chosen for me in the episode. So uh, we actually had a discussion with, with Chris because he asked me if I wanted to wear uh, the boxer shorts. I mean, not the boxer shorts, but the surfer bathing suit. And I opted for reality. T minus 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 0. What is this? The Holy Grail. The original Defense Department files. Hard evidence that the government has known about the existence of extraterrestrials for almost 50 years. I think there's a lot of mistrust of big government and and uh, all of those various and sundry you know uh, undercover organizations and what do they do and who are they spying on you know it's the big brother thing oh yeah is big brother going to take over someday and i think in this case it's even more intriguing because we combine it with the possibility that big brother may be in cahoots with some extraterrestrials out there who are ready to come in and take over the earth found something. Chris wanted to set this one in Arizona, and the one thing you don't have in Vancouver is desert. You know, my job is to take what's written on the page and turn it into the film that you see. That was a challenge, and it was, we met that by a, a, a large portion of the show is set in a, in a stony quarry out in the desert in Arizona on the, on an Indian reservation, on Navajo reservation. I found a, a stone quarry east of Vancouver here, and, uh, I knew that if I went to Sedona, uh, Arizona, that I'd have a lot of beautiful red rock cliffs and valleys and things like that. So I had the art department go in and paint about a half a mile of cliffs red. You have my files and you have my gun. Don't ask me for my trust. Mulder. Also, it was a challenge because it was sort of a pivotal episode for Mulder and Scully. I'm going to expose you and your project. Your time is over. My name is in those files. Of course, it was our first cliffhanger. You know, burning boxcar in the middle of the desert, trapped under the ground with no means of escape. Oh, my God, Scully. What have they done? To be honest with you, Chris didn't even know how we were going to get him out of there for sure. <laughs> we we kind of had to make up the second part a little later. We just knew it was going to be a great way to leave him. First, Sky now brings you even more great entertainment. See me on Sky. See me on Sky. See me. See me on Sky. See the world's top rated shows on Sky One and Sky Two first. Maximum entertainment. Sky One. See us on Sky. See me on Sky. Don't see her. See me first on Sky One. See me. See me on Sky. On Sky. More first-run films on Sky's three movie channels. Hey, see me on Sky. See me on Sky. See me on Sky. Don't change that channel. See me on Sky. You're watching Sky. See me on Sky. Be there first with even more live coverage on Sky Sports. See me on Sky. See me on Sky. See me on Sky. On Sky. See us on Sky. If you want to watch the best, now you know where to turn. First. On Sky. Sky. On 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 Sky. Is it okay? This is Sky 2.